أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي يصر بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم وبركاته رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله reminder that all creation is from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم from the Qaba made from the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah from Hadith al-Jabbar and all the heavens and paradises made from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Bayt al-Mahmur from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Arsh al-Rahman from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad immense reality of that light, immense reality of that blessings and for Allah to give us a door in which to walakar karana baniyam that we have honoured the children of uh, Bani Adam, of Adam and Eve because they are the containers of Nur al-Muhammadi and Allah is granting for us Subhana Nadi Asrahi bil Abdihi and Allah's Subhan and glory who takes his servant on a journey in the night and we talked briefly but not to the to the extent of what this blessed ayah deserves of our attention. That Allah's majestic glory and might, SubhanAllah describing that His glory and might, what was given to Sayyidina Muhammad of Allah calling His servant, bringing angels to whoosh the servant, bringing jubba from paradises to dress His beloved servant, a water from paradise to make wudu for the blessed servant bringing a buraq to dress his blessed servant, all of these gifts and blessings of Allah to show the magnificent, munificent status, tahzim al-Nabi The immensity of what Allah that all of creation is trying to reach to Allah's satisfaction, Allah is, is conveying gifts of satisfaction to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So this for us calibrates the reality and the essence that Allah when He called upon His servant and gave every tashrif and every honour and every majestic light and all of the realities of the Isra going all the way to Jerusalem making all the Prophets of Allah to pray Muhammadan Salah where at tahiyyat they have to give their shahada to Sayyidina Muhammad and then a miraj into the Divinely Presence of Allah All of that is Allah showing to all of creation, to all of His creation, to all the angels the magnificent status of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad 
And Allah granting for Ahbab and Nabi And why only Ahbab and Nabi, the lovers of the reality? Because they would never understand this Ayatul Kareem and they wouldn't understand its way of the miraj that the, the shaykhs often teach an example that the shaykh is, is going to walk on water. Our path is, is an immense faith, it's symbolic as if walking on water. And he has a student with him and teaches the student, I'm going to tell you what to recite and you follow me and we're going to start taking our path and walking symbolically all off of water means this path is, is such a high level of faith, following it is not something easy. And the student is make the shaykh is making his zikr and the student is making their zikr and in the middle of the way the, the student's nafs begins to affect him and he's already walking on the water and he's thinking, what his shaykh's reciting? Maybe I should recite the same thing and he begins to hear what the shaykh is reciting and immediately the student falls into the water and shaykh turns, what happened? I gave you something to recite, I say, ah, but I thought I would recite what I'm hearing you recite and that's the nafs trying to say that, you know, I'm at your level so I'll, I'll do what you do, I'll say what you say and I copy you in that sense. And that was one immense example that we're not at the level of the shaykh, that a shaykh is at least 1000 darajats above anyone who's studying with them because of the speed in which they're being moved and the speed in which they enter into that reality. And that tariqah taught them they're not at the level of Sayyidina Muhammad they're not even the dust under the feet of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad nor Sahabi nor Ahlul Bayt, they're far in the back of all realities. So the door of this reality was humility. You think that a non-lover is thinking like that or they're debating that they don't even need the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and they'll make their approach to Allah directly. That's why this verse is not for them, this way is not for them and these realities will never open for them unless Allah grants it as an exception. So for this reality to be understood, it's understood that the miraj of Sayyidina Muhammad no Prophet, no angel, no insan, no, no any creation can achieve that reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah going back to find La ilaha illallah. Our miraj is then only in Muhammadun Rasulullah Our miraj is not to go back to the same maqam thinking we are going to go and, and Allah calling for us an audience into His Divinely Presence. Our miraj for the believer is that he understood his light is from Muhammadun Rasulullah and that he's but a drop. That's why all these teachings every month is taking us to a course. The shaykh is not teaching anything random. This, these teachings by this guidance is on a very particular specific course. Everything that's being taught is to destroy one thing and to build another thing, to destroy the nafs and all that the, the nafs is trying to put on to the servant because these are the servants of Divine Love that Allah wants to take them to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result they're teaching them that you're in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and they see themselves like a drop in the reality of that soul, swimming in that ocean. So then what Allah wants from them, Subhana ladi asrahi bi abdihi laylan min al-masjid al-haram. Allah's glory will dress that servant. Laylan for us means in their state of annihilation. We said that when we meditate, 
Meditation is symbolic of annihilating ourselves. Allah describes throughout Qur'an, the day is for your work. You don't meditate in the daytime. You don't try to connect with Allah in daytime. You don't try to reach these knowledges and read these knowledges because daytime is a busy time for rizq, for sustenance, for family. The, the spiritual internet is being used for all of people's dunya desires. So Laylan and all of the doors of paradise and all of our events, all of our maghrib, all of our day it starts actually at night. That's why Maghrib and Islam for us is everything night. Is Allah saying, for you to achieve anything, you have to achieve a state of Laylan that you entered into the night means you knocked out everything, every thought, you annihilated yourself, that you took yourself to a state of your nothing, your non existence. Now, we got an email. That somebody said, oh now I will just you know harm myself and make myself to disappear. Completely haram, you're crazy. You've completely misunderstood the teaching. This is never about inflicting harm upon yourself. What a, what a ridiculous and horrible way to understand. This is about spiritual symbolism that you annihilate yourself that don't think you're anything, don't think you're of… Uh, of uh, of importance. Don't let your nafs to take credit for whatever we're trying to do. It's a continuous process that of course you've been created by Allah's majestic might. So Allah loves you, you have a special existence. But don't let your nafs take a piece of that reality and begin to dress it and take charge of it as if he's contaminating what Allah has given to us. So Laylan for us is the whole process of muraqabah, is that sit at night, annihilate yourself. That whatever wealth Allah gave to you, you're nothing. Whatever status Allah gave to you, you're nothing. Nothing in the, in, in the comparison of Allah and His Rasul It's not to say, I'm, I'm a worthless trash, I'm a bad person. No, this is Allah loved you, created you from immense love. But don't let our nafs to take a share in every action where my pride is involved and now I think I'm special and, and, I, and my pride comes into my praying and some people come and say, well we don't pray so long so that people can understand we, we're good at praying. This because it's nafsani, don't do things in front of people so that your nafs will take the share of it. Continuously annihilate yourself, annihilate yourself. That I'm nothing an abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, wa jahal. That admit to ourselves that we are absolutely nothing, so the cup is always empty and Allah is always filling from His Divinely Grace. Means then, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi, that Allah's glory and might that we took our servant from the night journey from Masjid al Haram means the no haram heart to the Masjid al-Aqsa, means the reality that we talk from the night before is that the heart and that's why all their teaching is teaching have good character, have good character. Wuqf al take a path in which you're looking at your heart and say that, Ya Rabbi is, is my heart reaching the status of no haram? That is it like the Kaaba? Is, is, is am, am I washing my heart with my zikr, with my tafakkur? Am I contemplating on my heart that don't let an idol come into my heart? Don't let something come into my heart that's more important than your Divinely Presence and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't let my bad character come into my heart and my anger and my qadab. So they are continuously washing, washing, washing the heart until it becomes haramain in which their heart, if something haram is trying to move into it, their wuqf, their vigilance are like soldiers themselves around their heart continuously attacking it and pushing it out, washing it away, making their istighfar, doing their salawat. Doesn't mean shaitan won't attack, shaitan is continuously barrage against their heart. 
but that they're washing, cleaning, making their salawats, making their payments, making their zakat, the, the, the struggling in the hardest way to make Allah to be happy with them and to come against shaitan and many other excuses that Allah will begin to give to the believers and we've taught those in other months. That when the believer is vigilant and whooshing and whooshing and then what did Sayyidina Yunus pray from Allah that I'm overtaken by shaitan Ya Rabb, he's hit me so many times and making everything difficult for me and my community and Allah said, don't worry, فتعواب السماء مَيًّا مُنْحَمِلًا that I will avenge you, I will open the heavens of my Divinely grace and water and I wash away every type of badness. Because Allah hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel, Allah is the wakeel of His servant, is the guardian and protector of His servant. The one whom is trying and struggling to make their heart to not have haram. They know that they're not going to be tested and shaitan going to leave them alone. But their whole life is struggle, 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 clean, clean, clean and do everything to make Allah happy. And then Allah will grant for them Masjid al-Aqsa. Don't think Aqsa means Jerusalem, that, that is from a physical understanding of uh, importance for a physical purpose. Masjid al-Aqsa is Bayt al-Mahmur. The house of Allah in a blessed precincts. Means Allah said, This heart whose precincts we did bless in order that we may show you from our signs. What we need to see signs from Jerusalem? It's different. This is from, from what Prophet had to establish for his government, for his reality, for all of those spiritualities. Is different, but what from Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad want for us to understand is that you have to take this vehicle of yours, the immensity of the qad that Allah has given to you, clean it, wash it, and Allah in a minute, in an instant, in a blink of an eye, take you to where your heart really is located. Means that your heart and your reality Allah take you to the Divinely Presence of Sayyidina Muhammad But Bayt al-Mahmur is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and all of paradises. And everything is making tawaf around that reality, praising Allah around the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's Manzil al-Qur'an, the house of Allah's Divinely speech, Allah's power and qudra emanating from Bayt al-Mahmur and all creation is circumambulating around that heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And where do you understand and see that example in dunya? The sun, Allah is not the sun, Allah is the might and the power of the sun. So whoever is representing that sun, Allah has made all of creation to tawaf around the sun. So means all the inhabitants on earth they're making tawaf around the sun and the sun is making tawaf around Allah It's like a, a, a layered teardrops with infinite amount of, of uh, circles and layers, innermost circle Allah Around that for its understanding Muhammadun Rasulullah So Nur Muhammadi is, is the light, its center and its qudra Allah's might and majesty and power. Not even you can say in the adab Allah's location, Allah has no location. Allah's power in that reality that Nur Muhammadi and everything is making tawaf on the outside. And Prophet the only one making the inner tawaf around the reality of Allah So when Allah is telling us that our Isra and Miraj if you understood these shaykhs is to that Divinely Presence, that Divinely Light, that heart of Allah's uh, Divinely Presence that He gave to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad 
that that heart from your heart to your highest aqsa heart which has from its reality within its reality the Holy Qur'an is emanating from Bayt al-Mahmur. From that reality Allah saying, that's a holy precincts and that we're going to open for that to show you some of our signs and say, He Allah He was Sami'ul al-Basir. Why did that ayat al-Kareem give two keys at the end? That what this shaykh is teaching you is that from your heart they're going to teach you, don't let any more haram, clean it, purify it. Allah is going to give you Israh wal Miraj that they're teaching you about the love of Sayyidina Muhammad It But what in one instant Allah lift the servant back into their reality where your soul is making tawaf around that, that Bayt al Mahmur, the highest reality, the most divinely gifted heart of Divinely Presence, that heart in which Manzil Qur'an emanating all of Holy Qur'an, Divinely speech for all of creation, every, everything in creation coming to that presence to get its coordinates and that is the inner reality of Sayyidina Muhammad the Divinely reality of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not from an earthly understanding, from the very purified immense precincts and when Allah saying, described it's blessed, its precincts are blessed. We said in Taseen tilka ayatul Qur'an, Taseen tilka ayatul Qur'an it's so purified this light of Allah so immensely powerful this light of Allah nothing can take it, nothing can take it, nothing can get close to even holding it. Imagine the burning gold, you know liquid gold and, and all of us are styrofoam cups trying to hold something. Allah won't for us to understand what you can hold. If a drop of that gold come onto you, that liquid gold, it burn through your, your flesh and your bones through everything that is of your existence. But I have created one, I have created one whom contains that reality. Its immensity is not something that can be understood. The one whom Allah created as an ancient tongue for His reality in which is Manzil Qur'an, is the house of Holy Qur'an. And that he's going to speak for Allah eternally and that Allah's uncreated Divinely speech of Qur'an is coming and emanating eternally as a fountain from that reality, that's Masjid Al-Aqsa. When Allah said, I'm going to take you, my glory is going to dress you. So that's the way we said it in Surah Yasi Subhana Al-Ladi, when Allah glory be to the hand. The hand that reached to this understanding because Allah's glory and Subhan all on their soul. That I took you from your dunya reality of mulk and in within a flesh you're in the presence of your malakut reality. Your soul in the presence of that house of Allah in which every light and every beatific emanation was Sami'ul Basir. And the two keys at the end of this ayatul kareem is Sami al Basir. Why? Because Sami al Basir, that they're teaching you that if you want to reach this reality, you have to be bi ahl al Basira. You have to be from the people whose hearts are open. But how can anything open for the servant who doesn't hear and obey anything? It's, it's impossible. So Allah gave these two keys as a isharat for the students who follow this reality. That what this shaykh is teaching you and what all the shaykhs are teaching you that the way of Sayyidina Muhammad was, Samina wa atana. Ah, we heard and we obeyed, ihtiba. All the lataifs of the heart. For them to even be activated and opened, the servant has to have put the crown of their creation is the head. And that the first thing that Allah wants from this head 
is that this crown of creation that I gave to you, this heart that I'm going to open to you, you have to have a life of samina wa tana. Samina wa tana. Ya Rabbi, I heard and I've obeyed. I heard the call and I came. And at every moment there's a darajat higher and higher and higher. So they lock their ears to their way. They lock their ears on their way because shaitan has a lock on people's ears. That's why they all have all these earrings all over their ears because shaitan is trying to mark the ear and say, no, no he's not samina for you, he's samina for shaitan. And the turuqs are coming to teach people, no, no you follow the tariqah, you follow the shaykhs, you follow the teachings, you follow the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Then you see all the barrage of emails, oh is this like a shirk, is this like this, this like this and trash, 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 spam, spam, spam. Because you're filtering out, you're showing yourself you're not from a people of hearing and obeying. Are you trying to even think that you know anything? Because we said at the door that I'm nothing. So the door to this reality was I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And, and we understand now this state of nothingness, how difficult this is that nobody wants to listen to shaykh, nobody wants to listen to the teachings, nobody wants to listen to any of the realities. Listen in the sense, no I, I don't mind sitting down for 10 minutes and watching your videos, they're quite entertaining with all the images. But Samina here means that we heard it, we obeyed and we're going to live by it. We're going to dedicate ourselves to that reality. When the servant is, is listening and dedicating their lives, now Allah is, is teaching them that if you listen and samina, 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 what's happening with samina? Basir is opening. Your spiritual vision, the more that you listen, you stay quiet, stay calm, stay patient, don't talk, don't, don't let things explode from your mouth like a gaseous state that it just pops out of your mouth every five seconds, that's not going to open anything. And you may be in tariqah 50 years and you got nowhere. So it's, this is not a prison sentence, you do a long amount of time and you reach the high realities. Shaykh Nazim reached in one day, he met uh, Shaykh Daghestani because he was at such a high level of Samina wa tana. That day he met with Shaykh Daghestani, that fajr he opened all his heart and said, you're finished. Everything is open for you. Zadika can be one day, it's not 50 years, I'm going to sit next to this shaykh, listen to them and not listen to a single thing he says. So Samina wa tana is then Allah is giving this Sami al Basir that these servants they understood and they mastered the concept of listening and obeying. They listen and obey, they listen, obey, they make their tafakkur, they study, they study, they don't have to understand it, they don't have to put a logic to it, they don't have to make a comment about it, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then what Allah opened for the servant who is continuously listening. And listening we said even to the point Dalil al-Mutahireen that the one whom takes you on a state of bewilderment, you think it's easy to listen? That's why there's no alams online. Because uh, someone who knows just a little bit of Islamic knowledge, oh he runs in two seconds. And we saw this all our life, they would sit with Shaykh Nazim, they, they know 20 hadiths by memory, they couldn't sit for five seconds. The state of listening with somebody who thinks he's been learned or someone who, who thinks he, he understood something and we said that what little knowledge they have block everything is what Sayyidina what Allah warned in Surat Al-Kahf. Don't ask me anything until I give you permission to ask it. While Azawajal was giving that, he said, because now you're going to have a tough time with Nabi Musa Because when someone knows it's not easy to sit there and just stay quiet and stay quiet and that's the reality of what Allah wants to open for the servant is stay quiet. Even it's agitating you, it's aggravating you, the knowledge was something that you know just kind of bewildered your mind, stay quiet until Allah opens your heart. 
And that's the only way Allah will open the heart and Allah will, ag will agitate and aggravate the situation to see how much you can tolerate, how much you can tolerate. So it means these people of Samina wa Tana they've been through tremendous amounts of difficulty in their life and their whole life was to just stay and tolerate and tolerate and tolerate. And the more that they were going deep into the reality when Allah addressed the servant with Samina that he's going to now be my hearing. Why? When Allah addressing you and you have patience and patience, Allah would dress, this becomes Hadith al Qudsi where I become the hearing that my servant hears. I'm dressing you. The more that you're being patient with your hearing, the more Allah's dressing you with His Divinely hearing. Because you're now hearing the inspirations of your soul into the heavens. Imagine people who can hear the news, hear the gossip of the dunya and all of that which is nothing but they can hear into the seven heavens into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Can you even imagine the complexity of that connection? People are mesmerized if a guru can tell you what's happening in the news or tell me what you ate last night and who cares about that? What they need to send their energy to find out and you know, next time you come and say hello, say, oh I know what you ate last night. What's astonishing and the miraculous reality of Naqshbandiya is their uloom, their knowledge is not from a book. You can read ancient books just to get a glimpse of it but their knowledge is from the heart and the pulse from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So at what level hearing they have that Allah has connected their soul all the way to the seven heavens beyond the understanding of the seven heavens past the limit of Sayyidina Jibreel and they pick up the pulse and the knowledge and the realities that are flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad This is Allah dressing that servant as Sami. That this one they hear from that reality and as a result of the hearing and that they submitted their hearing and now that they're hearing with Allah's hearing, Allah made them Ahlul Basira that they see because their ears are disciplined. As a result of their ears being disciplined Allah has opened their spiritual vision into these realms and into these realities so that when they speak they have witnessed it. They are not speaking philosophy and this is not a philosophy class. Whatever the shaykh is speaking and I don't speak for other shaykhs but I know for the discipline which in we were taught there's not a permission for us to speak on anything that we have not tasted it and that we are within it and eating and drinking from its reality and been given permission to speak about it. Somebody on the internet could read a book and talk about all sorts of things. So we're not speaking about anyone else and you shouldn't presume that everyone you're hearing is of that understanding. Many just pick up a book and read to you about the seven heavens and they don't even know their name right now. What is one of their name, two of their names or seven of their names? So this understanding Allah when He dressed the servant, He began to open their basir, their heart. And all of their heart, when the heart is opening they become ayat al kareem That at every moment from Masjid al-Haram that from the heart of this dunya, the associations of this dunya, their heart are in the association of Masjid al-Aqsa, Bayt al-Mahmur into the Divine the Presence. And the Divinely heart of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding, the depth of and the reality of the tariqah, the immensity and the importance of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.